I will not. The forces that are fighting against unborn lives, that are fighting against our Second Amendment, are that are fighting against all the rights that we believe in, want us to go silently into the night and disappear. I've got a message for them here in Raleigh today. It is not going to happen. against me and every time I hear one of these leftist people speak I can see it in their eyes had they had their way about it me a poor black child number nine of ten born into an extremely impoverished family I would have been on the abortion table and been up to them the things that I saw coming along when I was a young man they would have thought oh those are too big for you to bear you shouldn't have to suffer that way. There's no reason to bring another child into this earth, over this earth that can't be fed properly, that can't be cared for properly. You're gonna fail. You're gonna be a drug addict. You're gonna be in jail. You're gonna be a criminal. You're gonna be a, you're gonna live in misery. Here it is. This is the United States of America. Yeah. Woo! This is the United States of America. It does not matter where you begin. It's about where you stand. It's about the God-given rights that you are endowed with. Because we are endowed with those rights, because I was endowed with those rights, I have raised to the level that I have raised. And I didn't do it on my own, folks. I'm not standing here as Lieutenant Governor because Mark Robinson is that good. I'm standing here as Lieutenant Governor today because God is that good. religious thing. You know, everybody doesn't believe in God and, you know, everybody doesn't want to hear about your faith. You know, that's too bad. <laughs> that's a sad story you just told me. You don't want to hear about my faith, that means you don't want to hear about me. Because my faith is why I'm here. Amen. My faith is why we're all here. My faith is why we're free. Amen. Here it is. There's no greater mission on earth standing up for the most defenseless among us. Now we saw last summer people traveling all throughout states, all over, cities all over, being burned to the ground. We saw police officers blinded, murdered, assaulted, businesses burned to the ground, private and public property destroyed, and it was all done in the name, standing up for somebody's rights, standing up for people's rights. Yet still those same people that will tell you they had the right to commit those egregious acts of violence and destruction will also stand and say that they have the right to kill someone in the womb. You know, it's amazing to me how those on the left give these nice flowery names to the most egregious acts. A woman's right to choose is what they call it. Here's a woman's right to choose. Here's that so-called women's health care to take a defenseless human being, blameless on this earth, innocent blood, scramble that baby's brains and discard that child, that human being, like trash. That is what they call a woman's right to choose. Here's what the right to choose really entails. What the right to choose really entails is deciding whether or not you will be chased with your body and wise with your decisions. Knowing when it is time and when it is not time to lay down and make a child. In no uncertain terms, you don't go make a child till you're ready to take care of a child. Somebody asked me quite pointedly, show me the unwanted, the unplanned children that you raised. Show me the unplanned children that you have raised and taken care of. I have two of them. One of my children were playing. I didn't sit down and make notes and say, you know, today I'm going to eat uh, bacon and eggs for breakfast. I'm going to 
You know, I'm gonna go outside and work on the garage and uh, make some babies. <laughs> that is not how it works. It's not how it works for the overwhelming majority of people on this earth. Most children aren't playing. Most people don't sit down and say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I, you know, I want a baby, I'm gonna make me a baby today. Most babies are unplanned, but here it is, because they're unplanned, doesn't make them unwanted. Not to those of us who know right and wrong. My wife got pregnant. It's just simple logic. We're gonna have a baby. When she got pregnant again, we're gonna have a baby. There was no wringing of hands saying, oh, I wonder what we need to do. Should we go kill this child? Should we not kill this child? We had a baby. And we fell into parenthood. We made some mistakes, of course we did. But being a parent is the greatest call a human being can undertake. There's no greater call that a person can undertake than being a father or a mother. No greater call, certainly. I am honored to be the Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina. And I love it when people say, you know, Governor, I love that, that's great. It gives me great hope and I'm very honored that people would think enough of me to leave their homes, go to the ballot box and vote for me. But here it is. You wanna know what really gets my heart going? What really encourages me? When I hear my son call me Pops. When I hear my daughter call me daddy. When I hear my grandson call me Papa, that's what makes me feel like I have accomplished, accomplished something on this earth. And so today we stand here for the cause of these children. You see, we stand in the United States of America. And all too often we forget what the very first tenet of our founding documents is. The right to life. Hope these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And in this nation, in this nation, where well, they will send you to jail for destroying the egg of a bald eagle, or convict you for killing a mantis in Florida. We allow the murder of the most innocent human beings on earth and we do it with impunity. I have a message to everyone out there today. You can believe me, you can not believe me. It does not matter. You do not own this earth. It is God Almighty who holds this earth on in his hands. And it is God Almighty that we will answer to. And if we do not purge abortion from our shores for the cause of life, the same way we purge slavery for the cause of liberty, this nation will not continue to stand. Because how we treat the least of us will determine what happens to the most of us. So I say to you again, they want us to quit. They want us to be silent. I will not. I won't. I will continue to raise my voice. You know, and I'm sure there's some news agencies out there that won't like me when they hear me say that abortion is murder. Before we get too far, let me just go ahead and say this. Those mothers who are caught in bad situations and make bad mistakes, I do not hold them accountable. I cannot hold them accountable. I don't have that ability. That is above my pay grade. That is between them and their creator. But I'm gonna tell you who I hold account. Those people who are marching in the streets, calling wrong right, promoting the idea that it's okay to kill your children in the womb. Those so-called medical professionals, who I call the butchers of humanity, those are the people I hold responsible. And whether they like it or not, God Almighty is watching them too. And I pray a solemn prayer that somewhere along the line that their hearts would be touched, their minds would be turned away, and they would come to know that what they are doing is against humanity and is against our Father in heaven. Because in the end, 
that's who we've got to answer to. You see, I'm, I'm what they call a politician. Now they call me a politician, but I, I refuse to call myself that. And in some ways, I refuse to play the political game. That's why a lot of people would tell me, don't say abortion is murder. Guess what? Abortion is murder. And I say it to that town, and I say it to you, and I say it to this state, and I say it to this nation, and I'll say it to the world, because here it is, in the end, I don't have to answer to the people over there across the street in that building. I don't have to answer to the people at the Supreme Court. I don't have to answer to the president. I don't have to answer to any of those politicians in Washington. I have to answer to God Almighty. And one day I will stand in front of him and give him a chance for every word that come out of my mouth. When I leave here, there's going to be a lot of things he may be able to say that I've said and done, but one of them will not be that I stood up and stood silent while children were murdered, innocent children were murdered in the womb. And I will not, because this is our mission, folks. It's the reason why we're all standing out here in the cold right now, because we know and believe that life begins in the womb, and the protection of life begins thereon. And it is our mission to carry that banner. You know, a hundred some odd years ago, there were some other folks who stood where you're standing that understood that in a nation that believed that all men were created equal, could not stand and say those words and allow slavery to be on our shores. It is the same way with us today. We cannot say we believe in equality. We cannot say that black lives matter or all lives matter or blue lives matter until we say that unborn lives matter because that is where we were all start. But it's still legal to take an unborn life. Until we solve that equation and purge that terrible practice from our shores, this nation will not be the nation that it's supposed to be. And so I am encouraging each and every one of you again today do not be silent, do not quit. It's what they want, it's what they expect. They expected that they browbeat us enough. They call us enough names. They kick us in the teeth enough times. They have enough riots. They commit enough egregious actions. We'll simply quit and go away. I have a message for you. We will not. We will continue to rise. We will continue to stand. We will continue to speak. And we will do due diligence until abortion is turned in this state, forced turned on our shores, and is nothing but a bad memory in this nation and in this state. It is my mission to see it happen, folks. And I hope that it's a good mission to win. God bless you all. Thank you very much for being here. God bless the white state of North Carolina, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you all. Thank you.